I'm looking at um, get it, adding a clamp meter. And please leave it in the comments. I want people's comments. This one has a decent margin on it, and I like it. And it's really small. Sorry, I can't zoom out. It is quite small, right? I do not have a big hand, right? And this is like a really small, thin clamp meter. I really like it, right? I just I just got it in. I just took it out of the box. I haven't seen it before, and uh, it won't be this exact model, the o, the BM037. They will actually make a specific model just for me, and it'll have the blue thing and the blue handle. It'll have my um, Pantone color blue and everything. It'll have the EV Blog logo on it. They can do that, um, and it won't have the full functionality of this high end one. It will be slipped down, stripped down slightly. I think it will be missing the micro amp capability. Yeah, please leave it in the comments if you um, you know know of another good clamp meter. I mean, uh, Bryman make good stuff, right? Obviously, Bryman make good stuff. So um, I'm going to evaluate this. I like the um, screen on it; is nice and uh, well. There we go. Is nice and big. It's got a uh, it's got a nice backlight on it. It'll do AC and DC. It's not an AC only, so it'll do DC. It's got 60 amp mode. Um, and I have actually tried it, and you can actually zero that out. So, you can actually zero the DC. It, it works very differently, because it says zero and delta. They're, they're actually two different functions, actually. Uh, watch this, right? So on, on DC, as you saw, it's actually a DC zero function. It's not a delta function. But if you put it on AC, hold it down, it's actually a delta function, and you can see the little delta digit there. So that's intriguing, because they use different sensors to do it, right? So, um, yeah. So I thought that this, you know, it's a nice compact little meter. I can get it at a good wholesale price. I can make a decent margin on it, and it's something that I, you know, I don't want yet another, I don't want another multimeter. I've already got three different EV blog multimeters. I don't have a clamp meter. Not everyone needs a clamp meter. I Like, I rarely use a clamp meter. But um, I think it'll be good. Who thinks it'll be good to have that in the store? A good option. People seem to like the UniT meter for its milliamp resolution. Okay, it's got milliamp. Well, this will do um, 100. This will do 10 milliamp. What what does the UniT one do? But I doubt I can get the UniT at a good price. Like I, I don't think I can compete sales wise with the UniT. Uh, but but they're very loyal to their uh, dealers, which is why I cannot. They will not sell me. Like, I cannot sell any of the Bryman meters that any other Australian dealer has, that the official Australian dealer has. There, there is an official Australian Bryman dealer, I'm one of them, um, but they've already got rights to, if they already have rights to that meter, they will not sell. I can't sell, people say, oh, why don't I sell the 869 or whatever? I can't. I can't. <laughs> right? So, and likewise, I can't sell this one. I can't sell the BM037. That's why, to get around this, they're willing to make me a custom variant and call it, it'll be called the BM036, I think. But yeah, so they have to create a new model, just for me. Having a non-contact voltage detector plus lead plus beep on the bottom. Well, it already has. It's got the EF detector. It's got the EF detector. There it is. I can... There we go. I'm putting it near, putting it near my switcher. Putting it near my ATEM switcher. And... I don't know if it has the multi-level. Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, modes. I don't know. I haven't even read the manual. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's got EF detection. Um, I assume it's up. I assume it's the jaws. Haven't tested the continuity buzzer on it yet. Don't know what it's like. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yep. And, and it's got the uh, beep lit thing. So it beeps and flashes. Nice. And, and it's got diode test. I don't know why you'd have diode test on something like this. I don't know, do you test diodes on big industrial sites and stuff? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, that's that's pretty slow, isn't it? That's pretty slow. And it only goes up to 2 meg. 4, or uh, 6 or something, I don't know. How many count is it? 6, 5, yeah. Looks like it's 6,000 count. Will it have DC inrush uh, peak amps? Um, well, it's got min-max modes. So, it's got uh, crest mode. So, DC. Right? Yeah, crest. There you go. Yep. So it'll get a crest inrush. I assume that's what you're talking about. That should, it should do that just fine. And then it's got um, regular record min-max um, modes as well. 
So I think that's pretty groovy. Um, and, and it's really small. It's really quite compact. Really, like it's slim and it's slim and the jaws are compact and stuff. So um, I just briefly uh, tested it and it was accurate down to 100 milliamps. It was pretty spot on at 100 milliamps. I don't think any of them really go down to... be surprised if you can find one that goes down to a milliamp. Because it, it's a totally different tech. You can get like leakage detector ones that are specifically designed for low current leakage detection. But they're like... I don't know one that has like both. Anyway, I'm going to tear this down. Got 117 people watching. It's only on the YouTube, so sorry to Odyssey people. I, I just decided to press the on-air button. Anyway, it, it, it does feel... It feels pretty rugged, right? Does does feel pretty good. Yeah, I don't think this thing would be accurate under 100 milliamps anyway, but I was, it was almost bang on. It was plus minus a digit at 100 milliamps. The clamp design in general isn't able to accurately measure below 10 milliamps. My clamp mode is useless with that lower current. Yeah, I don't think it's just a limit of the design. Yep, yep. Yeah, you have to get specific. There are, as I said, there are leakage clamp meters, but they're specifically marketed as leakage clamp meters and they're very expensive. As far as I don't, does anyone make it cheap? Leakage clamp meter. Can someone do a googly fact check for me? I don't think I don't think any of the um, cheap brands make them. You know, you can get like a fluke one or something, but it's I think it's thousands of dollars. Straw pole, straw pole. It, would you prefer a higher current one like this with 60 and six? Obviously, we've only got two ranges, so you get two choices: 60 amps and 600 amps, or would you prefer 60 amps maximum and six amps? Yeah, 660. 66, 6 and 60, yeah. Because I, I don't intend selling this to like really high-end industrial people. Like it's more, yeah, lower ranges. Everyone says lower ranges. And double it for low load. Yeah, you can wrap multiple times, but that's not the point. 60 milliamps, no, you won't get a 60 milliamp range. <laughs> I guarantee the, um, the Hall effect sensor in here won't do it. It'd be noisy as hell. Yeah, the amp range symbol. Well, what it is, that amp range symbol right is it's designed for physically that indicates it like it's a clamp <laughs> and a smaller wire right this is a bigger diameter wire and when you actually put it in the big diameter wire sweet spot is in the middle the most accurate spot for the large for the 600 amp range is in the middle whereas in the 60 it was 6 amp range sorry 60 amp range you suppose that's why they put this up here and these little arrows you're supposed to put the wire here so the sweet spot is right there. It's not in the middle. I, I, I tried it and it didn't make a huge amount of difference, but technically to meet the accuracy spec, um, if you're on the low current range, you should put it there. That's why they have, or just, you know, wrap it around or just have your wire like that, right? And then just pull it like that, right? That's, that, that's near enough. That's better than that on the 60 amp range. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I might see if Bryman can do a, that, that'd be really cool. Like, if, if they could do a 60 amp and 6 amp range, that'd be great. I don't think they could do a 600 milliamp. 60 amps times 50 volts, as usual, home storage is a bit low, just 3,000 watts. Okay, yeah, 60, 600, but 60 is too low. 60 is too low, okay. 60, 600, use a regular multimeter for low current, yeah. Use a clamp for testing car batteries. Maybe I can ask them, can you make... Two different, like I can sell two different models. I could sell the 600 and 60, uh, sorry, yeah, the 600 amp and 60 amp range, or I can sell the 6 amp range and 600 milliamps, maybe. Um, because they're, they've only got the two positions on here. Yeah, it's nice to have the smaller current, but do you need the, do you need the accuracy at the smaller current? As you said, like every, everyone has a multimeter, right? But the whole idea is that you don't have to break into the circuit. But if you've got wires and stuff, the odds of needing to measure really low currents is quite small. 60 is too low. Yeah. Oh, okay, you'll, you'll overload with inrush at 60 amps at times. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Bandit. Be interesting to have an aperture that keeps the wire at the optimal position. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not that critical. It's just like a guideline. Handy to have both of you super keen on clamp meters. One for lower, one for higher. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe if, if it was a true lower current one, I'd probably want like 60 milliamps or something, you know. I would really want like, you know, wanky low, right? i uh, got to have a 600 amp for short circuit protection on lithium ion batteries. Yeah, like true, like, you know, there's, you know, people would be using this for like battery stuff and things like that. So yeah, 60 may not be enough. 
Yeah. And it goes down to 100, it goes down to 10 milliamps resolution anyway, right? It goes down to 10 milliamps resolution, right? And, you know, so, like, it's it's good enough. And it does AC, DC, and it is uh, true RMS as well. Low on the range requires a new certification. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, if they have to redesign it, it might have to go through, yeah. It, well, it, it'd have to go through a redesign. And whereas I can instantly sell this, they can just make it for me. They're, they're gonna, they say they can change the plastics to my blue. They say that's no problem. Um, whereas I have had that problem before. I have had that problem where, oh, you've got to buy like a hundred kilos. What was it? <laughs> it was a hundred kilos worth of plastic pellets or something, you know, they, you know, cause you got to get the different color pellets, right? For, for the plastic injection molding machine and stuff. Is there an option for six, 600? Yeah, but once again, I think if I, if I ask them for a six amp one, that is a redesign of the product. It, it might, might have to be recertified. Six and 60, anyway. All right, um, I'm gonna crack this thing open. Um, yeah, it, it does feel it does feel pretty rugged. All righty, let's open this. Yeah, um, the the um, the only thing I have a problem with this um, is that it is um, you have to screw. It looks like you have to unscrew the case to get the battery compartment. There's no separate battery compartment, so I don't know the battery life on this. Um, but then, like, it's not something that you'd use often. You wouldn't use a clamp meter as much as a multimeter. So it's got two triple A's. It's UL listed. Um, and it, it does have a high uh, cat rating, it's 300 volts cat 4. So, you know, as you'd expect with Bryman, Bryman are pretty much the leaders in high cat rate stuff. So, that 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 feels like plastic to me. Screw, screw doesn't fall out, nice. They, ha they have the captive, sc captive screw, very nice. But yeah, I guess, okay, that's, yep. So, that is the first con, is that uh, you don't have a battery compartment. Hello? There you are. Yeah, they're uh, plastic. Yeah, plastic threads. They're deep down in there. Self-tappers. Um, so that's not too terrific. So we've got our little battery holder. Does that come out? I see some wires in there. There's a little header down there. What's that doing? There's your clampy clamp. Let's have a look at our input protection. It looks really good. It's on a separate board. You know, the spacing's in there. And they've got the... Uh, isolation slots as well you know it's um it's a Bryman so yep look at that wow and we've got uh three MOVs and two uh PTCs nice and two fusible resistors so you know that's that's pretty groovy and they're using the pin interface to go down to the board nice yeah I I like that no worries there Ooh, hello who are you? You will succumb to my zooming <laughs> 40353 analog mux jobby. Okay, it's just an analog mux. Geez, they've got a lot of silk screen on that. So uh, there's more, there's more cutouts on there as well. Looks like that is your, that's your input string there. They got three series resistors there for high voltage, or is it four? Might be four under there. So that's pretty good with the cutouts and everything. That's nice, but you, you know, Bryman do. Bryman know how to do input protection. Like, they're better than Fluke, right? Bryman are pretty much the leaders in input protection. No battery cover which you can lose or break. Great, says Grafter. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fair enough. Oh, they spring. They're spring contacts. Oh, that's nice. Oh, what if they got it? They've got a metal threaded insert for that, but they don't have metal threaded insert for the case. Wow. This is, this is spring contact. I like that. Oh wow. That's that's really good. Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's another screw in there. Oh, fine. Yeah, that'll be the scam call. Scam call. Hi, this is the Australian Broadband Network. We have been trying to get in touch with you. They're different. That one that looked like it went into metal. Oh no, 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 it's into plastic, is it? Anyway, I I like that. I like that. That's that. That's a groovy little design. Ooh. There we go. There we go. There we go. Got it out. Oh, geez, we're being mooned. We're being mooned. All the all the best part is on the bottom. So why have they gone overkill on the silk screen? Why why are they doing that to the silk screen? Why why? <laughs> anyway, 
Yeah, I like oh five five resistors in series, is it? One, two, three, four, five. Five of the suckers. Wow. So that's that's pretty good. Gee, yeah. Liking that. And they'll have the L C D on the um I assume they'll have a zebra strip. Yeah, they wouldn't have a separate board for that, so I reckon the who knows that yeah, the micro could be under the L C D or something, don't know. It's a sensor board. That come off. There's another another header in there. Oh no, it's not a header. There's a couple of trim pots up there. So it's all manually trimmed. No, no, I don't think it's a socket. There you go. Nicely spotted, whack man. Undo the ribbon. <laughs> yeah, people were, yeah, whack man was telling me it was soldered. Is there a date code? Uh, uh, I don't know. No. 31, 33, 35, 37. As, oh no, 38, 39. As I said, they'll make me a 36. Here we go. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. Nice. There you go. Okay. Here you go. That's inside. You've got, uh, yeah, there's the backlight using um, springs. And then you've got the uh, rubber baby buggy bumper membrane buttons. And then there's, the, that looks like a standard um, Bryman implemented thing. And there, there's our board. Bryman chipset. Don't ask what it is. Secret squirrel. Oh, look at that. It even wraps around my head. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's an all-in-one chipset. Neat. So there's no separate LCD driver. Um, so that, but that is not all the segments. So that's a the, so the LCD they got in here actually has a uh, must have a uh, chip on glass, must have a COG driver on it because they're not driving all the segments through that. They're not muxing. They don't have mux, enough mux lines there. Groovy. Jeez, there's a lot of tantalums in there. That's like a voltage reg, is it? 3.3? 3.5, is it? And, uh, what's that? All four pins tied together. It goes to these two mysterious pins over here. Which we didn't... This... You remember? Those two pins were sticking up and we didn't know what they did? Does anyone know? Yeah, apparently Bryman roll their own multimeter chipsets. Yeah, it looks like a flash EE prom. Right. Yeah, that's what I originally thought. Yeah, is an external I2C? I squared I I agree, Kevin. Looks like a flash EE prom, yeah. That would be my, you know, because, yeah, you've got two data lines coming off. So it's probably like an I2C interface thing, and they're just tying... Oh, they're the address pins. Okay. Uh, 51st week, 2021 on the right. 51st week, 21. Yep. So it's got your buzzer. So this is looking pretty good. I give that a thumbs up. Does anyone disagree? I really like the, I really like the design here. I've got no problems with this. It'll easily meet its cat rating. Bryman know, know how to do their input protection. It's independently UL listed. Uses the standard Bryman um, rotary switch interface. And um, it's pretty simplistic. Why the wavy traces? Um, that's so that they can route them in. You're talking about those. It's so that they can physically route them because this one here, I don't know why, you know. <laughs> all, all this wiggleness came from the fact that they wiggled this one around, this big fat one here, like that, when you could have taken that fat one straight across there, straight across like that, no worries, right? <laughs> straight across, and then you wouldn't have had to wiggle these as much. You would still have some wiggles in there, but not as much. So yeah, that's just that's just poor layout. Not enough tension to detail. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. So I'll I'll actually leave this apart so I can take some take some high-res photos of it, because I like to include high-res photos on my product listings, but I think that's pretty good. Who thinks... Uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down whether or not I should carry that on the store, re regardless of the current rating, whether or not it's suitable. Who thinks I should carry a clamp meter? How are such circuit boards cut? They're uh, routed. They're, they're routed. You can see the... You, you can see the mouse bites there. This was uh, panelized, so this was attached to a panel, okay? But all this is routed. They have a drill which goes down and then it routes out any shape you want. So they've routed out that, which is why in there, for example, you will see that's why it looks like that. Ta-da! That's why it looks like that because the routing bits come in there and it's gone into that corner like that. Like that. That was the diameter of the routing bit they used. So, um... Yeah, that's that that that's how they do curvy things like that. You can just specify that, and then they just route it. They use a routing bit, and it was panelized because uh, that's where the mouse bite. I can't see the other mouse. Oh yeah, mouse bite. 
mouse bite. Is there a one along there? Something that 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 might be a V. That's not a V groove, is it? Could be. Um, yeah, but they yeah they'd be penalising this, so they'd be making more than one at a time. Thumbs up. Would need it for all the do-it-yourself batteries, home storage solutions, or new solar power guys. Yeah, I'm down. I don't think this clamp mirror is good enough for your branding, which is higher quality niche. Really? You don't think this is good enough for my branding? I currently rebrand two other brand Bryman meters. They're really good quality. And this looks pretty good quality to me. This looks pretty, like, you know, it's not a super high cost clamp meter. You know, I could sell this for like a hundred bucks. Any fiducials on the PCB? Not seeing any. Don't really need it. There's nothing real, nothing majorly critical here. They probably have fiducials on the panel. You don't need any localized fiducials because there's no high, high density stuff here. So any, um, any incremental errors due to your fiducials across the spread of your board, um, doesn't matter. So you can have the fiducials outside your panel. You only need fiducials on the board, localized, if you've got like really high density stuff, like, you know, a thousand pin BGA thing, and you know, it's fairly critical. Yeah, I, you know, I've got to do some more testing, but um, I'm confident in Bryman that this is a winner. Clamp meters are crazy useful. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? So yeah, I'd probably order like, three four hundred of these at least and if they don't sell <laughs> i can always sell them at cost <laughs> geez i'd fly out the doors if i could sell them at cost right so i like i can't lose like i seriously like i i cannot lose on these right it's just yeah if if they don't sell they're not popular for some reason then you know i i can always clear them out at cost i guarantee yeah I, even a small profit you know um and then i just don't order again um, I, I did with that with the uh, portable with oh, I had one the other day, but I was selling the uh, pocket multimeter and they just didn't sell the uh, Samwa Samwa pocket multimeter the really high-end one the real like I was selling a really high-end pocket multimeter and nobody wanted it So I had to basically clear them all out at almost cost Yeah, see so many people are into solar and battery stuff now that you know a, a clamp meter is worth its weight Wolf would start with the higher amp one and be be prepared for a second one. Yeah, yeah. I would I'd, I'd I'd probably stick with the six hundred and sixty. The the current model. They've they've offered it to me. They can get it to me no problems. It doesn't have to get recertified. They'll simply change the color and the branding, um, and I can and I can sell this. And well well they, well they change the features so they have to uh, actually uh, tweak the firmware. The um the sliding switch you you talked about this, that actually looks pretty good, although. It's it's kind of a thin plastic wall there. I turn. I, or you're you talking about the switch here. That that looks like a standard Bryman dual wipe interface. I've had no problems with those, so I I trust that that's good. It looks like standard Bryman standard Bryman design there. Had huge amount. Yeah, look that 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 plastic wall there could do with a bit bigger, a bit thicker. I think. I think that's a little bit. That's a little bit on the how you, how you doing side, but um, yeah, you know, like I'm I'm not going to take it apart further. I don't really care about like finding the Hall effect sensor in it and stuff like that. Yeah, the uh, wipe switch. Yeah, I, I I think it's pretty good. That looks like standard Bryman design. Yep, this is a Hall effect. Yes, yes, it is a DC one. They do sell one. They offered me one with an AC only version, but no, no, I, I want to carry one with DC as well because like a huge part. A huge market is is the solar battery thing, which is all DC. So this is uh, true RMS, AC, and DC. No, yeah, I I totally agree. You you wouldn't see that thin wall in there. It's just a it's just something I just noticed then. But um, you know the 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 case feels good quality. It's got you know the um deep um the deep protection in there for blast uh, protection and stuff, and the input protection is really good. I mean, geez, they got you know three mobs and a couple of PTCs in there. That's pretty good, right? And plus the two fuse what what are probably fusible resistors as well, really nice. And, and on a separate board, so that's how they're getting their high cat rating. Thank you everyone for uh, joining me for this uh, teardown, and um, thanks for helping out on the analysis. But yeah, where is the EF detection? Did anyone see? Did anyone notice the EF detection? Yeah, that, that's definitely soldered in there, isn't it? That's annoying. <laughs> it's soldered at an angle too. Wonder if that's deliberate. Did anyone see the EF detection? Is there a secret squirrel? Uh, or is that, or is, or is it actually over there? Are they using the clamp? Are they sneakily using the clamp as the 
antenna. I uh, yeah, I I think they might be using it. It, it might be if you take those plastic, if you you know they're welded together, ultrasonically welded. But if you snap the plastics apart, you might find that there's a little um, a little patch antenna up the top here somewhere. Yeah, which is perfect. All right. You never thought a DC clamp meter would be affordable to hobbyists. Yeah, well, you can buy the Uni-T one. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it does an adequate job. They they make low cost instruments. Bryman are a higher class because they meet higher cat ratings. It's got UL certification, which costs more and stuff, you know. And they like a higher quality build and things like that. Maybe a little bit more, certainly more consistent than Unity, that's for sure. Is that flex mitigated by the other half of the clamshell? What you're talking about there? Oh, it goes it, it goes up into there. Okay, I'm not I'm, I'm not interested in taking that apart further and seeing. Well, I don't know, you know, the whole sensor will be in there somewhere. It'll be buried in there. So maybe I can take that off later, but I won't do it now. I'm going to go pick up my car, actually. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. I, I, I like that. I, I like the battery in the face. They've, they've really thought about that. That's winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll do some more testing, and then I'll probably order some with the EV Blog branding on them and my own exclusive model, which will just be a mid-range model. It won't have the microamp range, I don't think. Um, but no, who wants a microamp range on something like this? Sarah, do, does anyone, would, would anyone lack, would, would anyone go, oh, it doesn't have microamps, I'm not going to buy it. Like, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand why you'd want a microamp, you know, for flame rods and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. Yes, the EV blog version will have a blue case and clamp. Yes, they have said that, um, and it, it, and it came with a little pouch too, I'm not sure if it, it came with a pouch in my box, so I'm not sure if it if comes actually comes with a pouch or not, but I'll get EV block branding on the pouch as well. I think it would be better to have Micram than not to have it. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's like, yeah, I don't, you know. Anyway, they can't give me the exact functionality because Bryman are weird in that they will not, even though the Australian dealer is absolute garbage, go try and buy one of these from Kabak, who's the official Australian dealer, the other official Bryman Australian dealer. I, I reckon I sell... 10 to 50 times more multimeters than Kabak do. The advantage for the Bryman is a bigger clamp compared to the Uni T. Is it is it bigger? Yeah. Well, well yeah, they did like it was tapered on the Uni T one. Anyway, anyway, I've done a video, Matthew, on the um, high, uh, what input I had on the EV blog multimeter. There's a whole minute, a 40 minute talk I've done on it. So anyway, thank you everyone for joining me. I'm gonna go pick up my car now and uh, see what features they're removed in the latest firmware update. Anyway, thank you for helping out. Hope you enjoyed that. Catch you next time.